ever. He hit me from behind, and I got pinned in between uh, his car and my tow truck. I tried to get up, but my legs were broken already. I never panicked. I just keep calm and try to stay up, think about my family, my kids, especially my wife was pregnant at the same time. I was in a coma for three weeks. They um, amputated the first time below knee, but the infection was still bad, so they had to go higher. The same day I woke up, my wife gave birth to my son. Val had a long road to recovery that included 32 surgeries. I had no choice but to be strong for my family. I had to keep going. Val and Nani decided to call Levitt Yamane and Soldner. John Yamani showed up and visited me at the hospital. Well, you know, Val suffered a severe injury when he lost his leg. What I tried to do was give Val encouragement, give him hope. And one of the ways I did that was by telling him about other clients that I had that had suffered similar types of injuries where they had lost a leg, but because they were able to get the proper medical care, they were actually able to get back to where they were before and get back to doing the kinds of jobs they were doing before. Lucky we found John Yamani and some, um, some other good people to help us. Levitt Yamani and Soldner helped Val, but his loving wife was always there by his side. I'll admit it, she, she did great. She's a superwoman. And Val has another message to share. I just wanted to tell everybody that's driving, just slow down, move over for the tow operators. Give them room. Let them uh, take you home safely. Fender Biter. Seen it, covered it. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Now, from KITV4, Island News, this is Good Morning Hawaii. Coming up on Good Morning Hawaii, a suspect and police exchanging gunfire in a Waianae neighborhood. The latest details on that dangerous situation coming up in a live report. Plus, a global human rights organization stepping into the situation on Mauna Kea, why they're urging the governor to put an immediate stop to the TMT project. And we are in the thick of hurricane season, as we've been talking about now. A group of hurricane hunters are heading our way to study what will become hurricane, uh, Eric and Flossie here in the Pacific. Good morning, Hawaii. It's July 30th on your Tuesday. That's right. Before we get to those top stories, we'll check in on weather and traffic right now with our Tasia Worley. Tasia, how's it shaping up outside? Well, we do have those winds that continue to create this trade wind Tuesday coming in from the east about 10 to 20 miles per hour expected to be sticking around for quite some time. And as is expecting to strengthen later on throughout the week. So our winds right now, 16 miles per hour for Lihue, 13 for Honolulu, and now in Kahului at 14. So just setting the trend for a pretty nice, moderate to breezy day. 80 degrees for Honolulu and Lihue. And now again, yesterday, Kahului did reach 97. So just expect another warm day once again with a similar weather pattern. We are expecting your forecast highs around midday, just shy of 90. Now our satellite, we are picking up some moisture toward the east of the state. It could increase our windward showers and clouds for the eastern half and then move over a bit more so this afternoon for our Oahu and Kauai. Starting off with Kauai, some moisture toward the south, raising humidity levels just a bit, but then comfortable by the afternoon. Oahu pretty much dry again later this evening. We're expecting more of those windward showers to fill in. Maui County at the moment, heavier cells of showers moving in for the windward areas. Hawaii Island again, bands moisture will become on and off for the eastern end of the island than afternoon clouds for Kailua Kona. Now, Hurricane Eric, this is the latest update. Now a Category 3. We are seeing maximum sustained winds at 115 miles per hour, moving west at 17 miles per hour, just less than 1,000 miles southeast of our Hilo, Hawaii. Now that track is showing it passing toward the south of our Hawaii Islands, but we can see within the cone of uncertainty, very close to the tip to the south point of Hawaii Island. Expected to bring a surf for now, Thursday Day throughout the weekend. Wind speeds could increase just a bit as well as rain chances. So we'll keep a close eye on that even closer on Tropical Storm Velocity. I'll have the update on that with your next weather hit. But for now, here's a look at traffic. We do have one incident to talk about before we head to that closure. 
Kuala Street and Acacia Road in Pearl City. Just a heads up, it's already a slow intersection there, so just heads up for a bit more time that you'll be in that area. If you're heading to the airport, there will be alternating lane closures at the off-ramp from the H1 freeway in the westbound direction, 8.30 to 1 o'clock today. So just a heads up, if you are heading there again to the airport, add some extra time. We got that zipper lane now open all the way throughout Waikele. No other major accidents or stalls out on the roads. Over to the desk. Thank you, Tasha. Time now, 5.03, and a man in his 60s died in a house fire in Palolo Valley. Yeah, this happened on Kalua Place near William P. Jarrett Middle School just before 3 Monday afternoon. Flames and dark plumes of smoke engulfed the single-story home within minutes. Honolulu firefighters found the man in a bedroom. Neighbors tell us they could hear him yelling for help. A woman also lived there, but she wasn't home when that fire broke out. I ran over here and I saw the whole house was on fire. They had the satellite dish and the whole thing was like engulfed in flames. Electricity started to pop off and stuff. Now that blaze, it was put out around 445 in the afternoon and that cause is still under investigation. And new this morning, a man has been arrested for attempted murder after allegedly shooting a Honolulu police officer. This all happened during an armed robbery investigation in White and Night. And KITV Force Mackenzie Stasco live outside of police headquarters this morning. Mackenzie, any details on the officer's condition as of this morning? Well, yeah, Lindsay, Tom, we are waiting on the Honolulu Police Department to officially identify the officer who was shot. But we do know this morning, police have told me that the officer and the suspect who was also shot are both in stable condition. And here's what we know so far about the entire incident. Several plainclothes officers went to this house on Alta Street in Pokai Bay around 1.40 yesterday afternoon. When they were there, they were there to investigate an armed robbery that happened over the weekend. And the officers were able to identify three people in connection to that robbery. At some point, police say a scuffle ensued and a man pulled out a gun and shot the officer. That's when another officer who was there, also in plain clothes, shot the suspect. Police tell me the officer was shot in his right hand and in his chest. However, we have confirmed that the officer who was shot was in fact wearing a vest. Now, police also tell me that the suspect was shot in his left wrist and his right thigh. Both the officer and suspect were taken to Queens Medical Center on Punchbowl. The 47-year-old male suspect was officially arrested at the hospital late last night for attempted murder in the first degree. Again, we are still learning details. Uh, we have not yet learned the identity of the officer who was shot, but police do tell us that he is in his 30s and is a five-year veteran of the Honolulu Police Force. As soon as we get more information, we'll be sure to bring it to you. For now, though, we'll send it back to you inside. Time now 506 and Big Island Mayor Harry Kim has been a longtime supporter of the 30 meter telescope, even though many in his community are opposed to any development on Mount Akea. Now last week, Governor David Ige put Mayor Kim in charge of mediating talks between both sides to try and find a compromise. The mayor says the issues aren't just about a mountain or a telescope. It has a lot to do with keeping a community united. I don't like violence. I don't like force to do anything. And so help me, who wants to be responsible for calling in things that will result in conflict between people on this island? I'm your question, how are we going to do it? Well, maybe I'll ask you to help me out here. Now, Mayor Kim believes demonstrators have the right to protest, and he also says TMT has the right to build, and that all people should have the right to access the mountain. He says all areas need enforcement. His job is to find out the best way to make that happen. A global human rights organization demanding Governor Ige put a stop to TMT construction. The Hawaii chapter of Amnesty International took their stance straight to the capital yesterday. And joining them was one of the Kapuna arrested on Mauna Kea a couple weeks ago. And they brought a proposal including a letter to the governor saying the state should have consulted with native Hawaiians whose human rights could be affected by TMT. It is the legitimate right of people to peacefully express their opinion. The command hierarchy 
must convey a clear message to law enforcement officials that their task is to facilitate and not to restrict a peaceful public assembly. That means, you know, not drawing their weapons, not using tear gas, not using threatening with, you know, uh, batons. So we need our Amnesty International is now waiting a reply from the governor's office. KITV4 has continuing coverage on the tension over 30 meter telescope across our social media platforms. There is also a special section on our website at KITV.com. All right, well, you know, we're, it's Tuesday. We're stuck in the middle of the work week, you yeah. know, so want to get, get out, maybe go to Vegas, huh? Sounds yes. like a good idea, right? We got Kevin with us live in studio with the name of our lucky winner. Yes, and I'm really excited. We had another big Hawaii winner last week. She was playing her favorite dragon machine at the Fremont Hotel, lined up the symbols, walked away with $114,000. I played that machine myself. I won seventy five. That's a good luck there. That's, yeah, I, I, but, uh, I, you know, I lived in Vegas for two years, never had that kind of luck. No. So, <laughs> well, you got to go to the California Hotel and Casino. There we go. <laughs> uh, but Monica, amigo, Monica. if you're watching, fifteen minutes to give me a call, and you and a friend could be going to Vegas, courtesy of Vacations Hawaii. All right, Monica, amigo, again, fifteen minutes to call in. Pack your bags. You're headed to Vegas. All right, Lindsay, back to you. All right, thanks guys. Time now is 5.09 and when we come back, see how one animal clinic in Florida is going the extra mile by saving furry friends' lives. But first, here's another look at the winner of our Las Vegas giveaway, Monica Amigo. You have less than 15 minutes to call 535-0444 right now to claim your prize. Don't go away. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Accomplished graphic artist Moni Casimero, founder of the first female-owned design firm in Hawaii. I wanted to elevate the images and icons of Hawaii and Hawaiians. And I saw that potential in graphic design. Every piece she created through her career, precise and purposeful. Moni Casimero, one of Hawaii's remarkable women. KITV4 honors remarkable women. Brought to you by the Hawaiian Airlines Bank of Hawaii World Elite MasterCard. Jardians asks, while managing your type 2 diabetes, why think about your heart? Because with my type 2 diabetes, I'm more likely to have a fatal heart attack or stroke. Lower A1C helps, but type 2 diabetes still increases my risk of a fatal cardiovascular event. Because type 2 diabetes is more than A1C. Wow. These are great answers. And that's why there's Jardians, the first type 2 diabetes pill that offers a life-saving cardiovascular benefit for adults who also have known heart disease. Because Jardians can reduce my risk of dying from a cardiovascular event. And it lowers my A1C with diet and exercise. And it's the number one prescribed pill in this class. Jardians can cause serious side effects, including dehydration, genital yeast or urinary tract infections, and sudden kidney problems. Ketoacidosis is a serious side effect that may be fatal. A rare but life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Jardians and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this bacterial infection, ketoacidosis, or an allergic reaction. Do not take Jardians if you are on dialysis or have severe kidney problems. Taking Jardians with a sulfonylurea or insulin may cause low blood sugar. So, now what do you think? Well, my A1C is important. There's so much more to think about. Ask your doctor about Jardians today. At JCPenney, it's time to rediscover your rhythm. Remix your kicks. And reconnect with your crew. It's time to reset for school and get back to you at JCPenney. When it comes to Hawaii's favorite plates, nothing beats the delightful dishes at Eggs and Things. Freeze. See what I mean? Whether it's a classic night of beers and lip-smacking burgers, a sweet treat for a first meet, or family style to feed even the craziest of appetites, Eggs and Things has the menu for you. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, even pauhana. Open 6 to 10 p.m. Now extended Friday and Saturdays until midnight. Military and Kama'aina discounts apply. So come in and unwind today.
Okay, now the latest update with Tropical Storm Flossie. So it is expected to slowly strengthen into a hurricane later today. It does have maximum sustained winds at 70 miles per hour. It is moving west over very warm waters at 15 miles per hour. So a lot of fuel to help that system continue to strengthen up. Now, becoming a major hurricane is what we are expecting or by a category two by around Friday. So that's also what we're expecting Hurricane Eric to pass south of the state. So as you can see, it is continuing to move closer to the vicinity northwesterly around your Sunday. So enhancing our surf, enhancing our winds, we'll definitely keep a closer eye on that. We're hoping that it continues to break apart due to wind shear in that area. We do have again the sea surface temperatures very warm. Those two systems continue to travel over and another disturbance just behind Flossy. So so again, definitely just a gentle reminder to stay prepared. So for today is calm, less than four feet for the east and south, less than two for the north and west. We've got high tide around 325 this afternoon over two feet and a half. And our swell tracker picking up, as you can see, enhancing very much for your Hawaii Island and Maui County by Thursday into Friday as Hurricane Eric passes through. And right behind that tropical storm Flossie bringing us some surf for the eastern half Monday, well enough into your next early next work week. So we'll keep a close eye on that. For now, today, partly cloudy conditions in the afternoon for the western half, eastern half starting off with partly cloudy conditions in the morning with a few passing showers. Now here's a look at your traffic. We just have that accident still in Pro City at Kuala Street and Acacia Road. Other than that, typical congestion through Waikele. Over to you. All right, we all know what that sound is. Time for some morning shakas. And today we're recognizing an emergency animal clinic in Florida that started a blood donation drive for dogs. That's right, dogs. In the Port Ritchie program, Puppies with a Purpose says sick dogs often need blood, especially during the summer because of heat stroke and snake bites. In July and August alone, about 40 to 50 furry friend friends are in need of blood. And the animal emergency of Pasco says the process only takes a few minutes and donors get treated like heroes. He has never been like sedated or anything like that. He jumps up here, he donates a wake, and we make it a very positive experience, loving on him, kind of telling them how good he's being, giving him lots of kisses and everything like that. Total good boy there, and the program is free, and because doggy donors have to be healthy, they also get free heart, worm, and flea treatments, plus a snake bite vaccine to strengthen their blood. Oh, so sweet. You know, humans, we need blood ourselves. Thousands of gallons of blood are needed in Hawaii every day, so it's great to see dogs getting blood in Florida. Yeah, and just, you know, when it's hot especially, just got to make sure you take care of the furry friends, too. Definitely. Time now is 5.15, and when we come back, see why taking an aspirin a day may not keep the doctor away. But first, here's another look at our winner of our Las Vegas giveaway, Monica Amigo. You got less than 15 minutes to call 535-0444 to claim your prize. I'm jealous. Pack the bags. Don't go away. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back on your Tuesday. Time now, 515. KITV4 Island News, sponsored by Aloha Pacific Federal Credit Union. Not happy with your loan rates and high fees? Want to hear a secret? The best way to bank may be at Aloha Pacific Federal Credit Union. Our members are also our owners. That's why your loan rates are so low and you have very low or no fees. We don't have stockholders, so all our profits go to member benefits. Now that's a great deal. When you have Aloha, anything is possible. Visit a branch or alohapacific.com. So you're ready to buy a new car. You know what you want, but not where to get it. You could start by going here, then here, and even here. But by then, the entire day's nearly gone. Or you can save time and go straight to Hawaii's Auto Mall in Waipio and compare hundreds of vehicles in one location. Think of all the time you'll save. Time you can spend enjoying your new car rather than shopping for it. Get your next car at the Tony Group Autoplex Waipio and experience the difference.
signs are everywhere. Charles in Waipahu saved over $390. Lucette in Honolulu saved over $450. Call 92 Dietrich and save. From the smallest cottage to the largest house on the block, Wisteria Lane has something for everyone. Transform your home with one of our wide selection of flooring, a luxurious look for the everyday homeowner, and with an unbeatable pricing. Visit Wisteria Lane today. Do you have type 2 diabetes and are afraid it will lead to dialysis, loss of eyesight, heart attack, or even amputation? Or maybe you're going through this right now. Our program will help you reverse your type 2 diabetes. Your office visit includes our free diabetes reversal video so you can learn how to reverse your diabetes and get off your medications. The day they told me I didn't have diabetes anymore, I could not even touch the ground. I was so happy. Happiest day of my life. Schedule your appointment today. I don't know how I tell somebody they're not enough. The man I end things with today is not going to expect it. <laughs> I don't know if I want this. The Bachelorette Live Finale event continues tonight on ABC. 518 on this Tuesday. Welcome back. We do have a team of hurricane hunters that took off from a Keesler Air Force Base in Mississippi yesterday to fly through Hurricane Eric and Tropical Storm Flossie as they turn west across the Pacific. So the aircrafts are scheduled to fly through the storm starting today to collect data like temperatures, wind speed and direction, humidity and surface pressure. The data helps the National Hurricane Center create more accurate forecasts. Remember that hurricane season does run through November and KTV4 is tracking each disturbance in the Pacific to stay informed. Check out our hurricane section. It's right under the weather tab on our website at KITV.com. Now we're taking a look at your clouded rain forecast across the Pacific. Now the Central Pacific Hurricane Eric just did enter yesterday. Now category three. Following right behind that tropical storm Flossie expected to strengthen into a hurricane later today our next update will get around 11 o'clock so I'll go Facebook live for that and give you the latest update there there is a disturbance following right behind tropical storm Flossie just a great reminder that we are approaching the busier months of hurricane season so definitely want to get you and your family prepared and best just stay prepared Closer to the vicinity, satellite and radar picking up our winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. We do have a disturbance toward the northeast, so that will continue to increase our cloud coverage and some showers moving in for the eastern half of the state. Later on in the afternoon, probably cloudy conditions for the western half of the state. We could get more trade showers as well. Taking it island by island, temperature highs for the west side of Kauai, 89, 87 for the east side. Lighter winds 10 to 15. Oahu 10 to 20 with the leeward coast around 89, windward areas around 85. A bit breezier throughout Maui County. That's the reason why we have that small craft advisory. Maui County all the way throughout our Hawaii Island. Kona will be typical weather with some humidity levels up, partly cloudy in the afternoon. Hilo Hawaii 85 with passing showers throughout the day. Now, surf for the east and south, 2 to 4, flat to 2 for the north and west. We do have high tide around 3.30 this afternoon. It's nice looking over 2 feet, 2 and a half feet at that time. Again, surf will increase Thursday throughout the weekend due to Hurricane Eric. And then next week, Monday and Tuesday, especially for the eastern half of the state, due to Tropical Storm Flossie. Now, here's a look at your traffic. Shoulder lane closures on Wanalua Freeway westbound direction today from Fort Shafter off ramp through Ahua Street overpass. That begins early this morning, 7 o'clock till 3.30. We've got that poly contra flow open and a bit breezy through that area. And just a reminder that the contra flow hours will be extended starting on Thursday. Zipper lane is open. We're seeing some clear conditions through Waikele. That stalled vehicle that we had at the Waikele on-ramp still there at the shoulder, not causing too much of a blockage. H1H2 merge is clear all the way throughout Ka'ahumanu and clear either way, Moanalua Freeway or the viaduct. East side drive on Kalani Anaole Highway has also lightened up. We had some congestion at Laukahi. That has cleared up. Your drive times are up on your screen. Coming in from the east side, less than 20 minutes. Coming in from the west side, 72 minutes into town. We'll be right back. 
Today, SecBite's job cuts follow poor financial numbers for Uber. The rideshare company has handed out pink slips to 400 members of its marketing department. That's one-third of the staff. The move follows first quarter losses of $1 billion. There could soon be a new way to keep your cool during this summer heat. Sony is developing the wearable air conditioner that slips on the back of your shirt. It's controlled by an app on your phone, allowing you to lower the temperature on your back from 97 degrees to 73. The expected price tag, around 115 bucks. Finally, if you're big on using food delivery apps, you may not like this one. A new survey of 500 food delivery drivers finds 28% of them admit to eating from an order before dropping it off. More than half of the drivers admit being tempted by the smell of the food. Can I get a fry? Those your tech bites. Have a great day. I wanted more from my COPD medicine. That's why I've got the power of one, two, three medicines in Trilogy. The only FDA-approved three-in-one COPD treatment. Trilogy, the power of one, two, three. Trilogy, one, two, three. Trilogy. With Trilogy and the power of one, two, three, I'm breathing better. Trilogy works three ways. To open airways, keep them open, and reduce inflammation for 24 hours of better breathing. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Trilogy is not for asthma. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. Think your COPD medicine is doing enough? Maybe you should think again. Ask your doctor about once daily Trilogy and the power of one, two, three. Trilogy, one, two, three. Stay at Trilogy.com. The Queen's Medical Center, Hawaii's healthcare leader for 160 years. In 1859, King Kamehameha IV and Queen Emma were inspired to build a hospital for the sick. Today, Queen's has expanded to meet the growing needs of Hawaii, offering comprehensive heart care, advanced neurological services, a world-renowned cancer center, and Hawaii's only level one trauma center. Caring for our community, the royal legacy continues. The Queen's Medical Center, celebrating 160 years. Accomplished graphic artist Moni Casimero, founder of the first female-owned design firm in Hawaii. I wanted to elevate the images and icons of Hawaii and Hawaiians. And I saw that potential in graphic design. Every piece she created through her career, precise and purposeful. Momi Casimero, one of Hawaii's remarkable women. KITV4 honors remarkable women. Brought to you by the Hawaiian Airlines Bank of Hawaii World Elite MasterCard. When it comes to affordable home furnishing, Ross, hands down, has the best deals on the island. Everything you're looking for all in one convenient location. From living room, dining furniture, to bedroom sets, including remanufactured green beds. Giving you the feel of nationally recognized brands at a fraction of the cost. So much variety of prices, too low to ignore. Ross Appliance and Furniture will save you hundreds, guaranteed. Got a chip or star crack in your windshield and it's safety check time? Repair your windshield before you go. Your chip repair may even be free, depending on your insurance. Book now. Free quote at aceautoglass.net or call us. Most things in life should be easy. And the best things in life come free. And for everything else, it's about finding the right financial provider. One that cares for your needs. Pearl Hawaii Federal Credit Union. Upgrade you. Experience the ultimate in durability and award-winning designs with Prism, the latest in luxury flooring from Armstrong. Dent, scratch, and steam-resistant, Prism flooring is also 100% waterproof, protecting against spills and pets. Choose from 20 uniquely crafted designs where realistic textures combine for the ultimate natural look. To learn more about Prism Luxury Flooring, visit the Homeowners Design Center at 1030 Colbo Street, Honolulu. Installation service is also available. This is Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back to Good Morning Hawaii. Time now is 527 and turning to health news, millions of Americans are taking an aspirin to prevent possible heart attacks. 
But the question is, could that be doing more harm than good? Well, Megan Tervisian has more on that with what experts say you should do to stay safe. Many Americans use a small dose of aspirin with the aim of preventing heart disease, but taking the drug in this capacity might be overzealous, and like any medicine, it comes with risks. Three studies in 2018 show that in people without a history of heart disease or stroke, daily dose aspirin actually has few benefits and can cause significant bleeding. The American Heart Association now suggests we should be more judicious with aspirin use. Their advice is clear. If you had heart problems and your doctor tells you to keep taking that aspirin, it could be a lifesaver. If you've never had them and you're not high risk, don't take a daily aspirin. But new work from Harvard suggests these warnings have gone unheeded. In fact, 25% of adults over 40 use low-dose aspirin without any history of heart problems. That's 29 million people. The problem is even worse among the elderly. For those over the age of 70, levels reach 50%. The AHA specifically cautions against people 70 and up taking aspirin if they don't have a history of stroke or heart disease. So it's a worrying pattern. Lots of people are taking aspirin who probably shouldn't be. If you're on aspirin, don't make any changes until speaking Speaking with your doctor, if you've had a stroke or heart disease, it's an important medicine. The best advice, check first. With this Medical Minute, I'm Megan Tavrizian, ABC News. Well, time now is 528, and your top morning headlines are still ahead. But first, we now have a winner of our Vegas giveaway. Hey, Monica Amigo called in on the first try. Thanks for watching. You and a friend pack those bags. You are heading to Vegas this weekend. Congratulations to Monica. Don't go away. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back. Time now, 529. Do you love the San Francisco Giants? And how does this sound? You could sit in the owner's seats at AT&T Park in San Francisco. That's a home run. Giants at David Buster's on Friday, September 6th at 4. And enter for a chance to win two VIP tickets, hotel, and air on Alaska Airlines. Go to the best place to watch the games and play the games at David Buster's for a chance to win. Sponsored by CBS Sports Radio, Alaska Airlines, and David and Buster's. <laughs> My two favorite words... Help yourself. If you want it, go get it. Life is in the moments you dare to take. Unapologetic confidence starts with beautiful skin. Don't hesitate. First wax on us. Yole, 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 yole. Whoa, now that's impressive. Yeah, but not as impressive as the amount you can save by switching your insurance to the wide range of products from Island Insurance. Wow. Get impressive savings from Island Insurance. Call 643-4000 or visit islandinsurance.com. I can do that too. Really? St. Francis Healthcare System is creating something new and exciting. The St. Francis Kupuna Village in Liliha. The former hospital campus is being transformed into a health and wellness community for seniors and their caregivers. Featuring a skilled nursing facility and an array of physicians in different specialties. With future plans for assisted living and independent living and a senior community center. Call today for more information. St. Francis Healthcare System. Creating healthy communities for Hawaii's families. Do you have type 2 diabetes and are afraid it will lead to dialysis, loss of eyesight, heart attack, or even amputation? Or maybe you're going through this right now. Our program will help you reverse your type 2 diabetes. Your office visit includes our free diabetes reversal video so you can learn how to reverse your diabetes and get off your medications. The day they told me I didn't have diabetes anymore, I could not even touch the ground. I was so happy. Happiest day of my life. Schedule your appointment today. Now, from KITV4, Island News, this is Good Morning Hawaii. Right now on Good Morning Hawaii, new rules put in place at the U.S. southern border why thousands of migrants may no longer be able to seek asylum. The second round of Democratic presidential candidate debates is set to kick off tonight here in Detroit. I'm Trevor Ault. I'll have what you can expect coming up next.
And the gunman from Sunday's mass shooting at a festival in California now identified the new details on the horrific event just ahead. Well, good morning to you. Welcome back to Good Morning Hawaii. Time now, 5.32. Yeah, I want to take you right back outside with your weather and traffic. I was kind of joking. I think, like, Flossie is such a funny name for a hurricane, but that's exactly what's going to happen, right? It's turning into a hurricane probably today. And that's right. We're expecting it to strengthen up and also very much on our eyes right now. We're expecting it to go to the northeast. We'll start off with Hurricane Eric right now. The latest update, it is a Category 3, so a major hurricane. It is expected to strengthen up and then weaken more so by your Wednesday into Thursday. Expected to pass south of our Hawaii state, but it could bring us a surf as early as Thursday night into Friday, and then an increase of an enhance of winds and also an uptick of showers. Now the next track, Tropical Storm Flossie, we're expecting that update as a hurricane later on this afternoon. It will strengthen, move toward the northwest. It's got a lot of fuel as it does move over warmer temperatures of those waters. But as you can see, that track pretty much going northwest. So we'll continue to keep a very close eye on this. We also have another system following right behind that in the eastern Pacific. So again, hurricane section on our website under the weather tab. Closer into town or into our Hawaii State, we are catching some partly cloudy conditions for our windward areas over on the western half. Eastern half, a bit more cloudy, nice and clear in Honolulu at the moment. And for Hilo Hawaii, calm at the moment, but we are expecting, as you can see, just 50 miles out, bands of moisture moving on in. So current conditions for Honolulu, we are seeing around our upper 70s. It just made 80. Our dew point and our humid levels still nice and low. Northeasterly winds already in the double digits, expected to stick around through the remaining of the week. Now our satellite and radar picking up partly cloudy conditions for Kauai, rolling in even more so by the afternoon as you can see passing showers around your lunchtime. Oahu very clear out on the board. Sunnier conditions around midday and then partly cloudy by that afternoon, late afternoon. Breeze here throughout Maui County, heavier showers coming in toward the windward areas, partly cloudy throughout the day. Hawaii Island will continue to see passing showers. Kailua Kona, partly cloudy with showers in the afternoon. So forecast has come for the east and south, two to four. Very nice conditions for the north and west, a flat to two. And again, with your extended forecast of Friday throughout your weekend, the impacts of Eric. Sunday throughout your early next week, the impacts of Flossie. So we are expecting more rain and wind out on that forecast. Here's a look at your traffic. No major accidents or stalls, just slowdowns typical through Laukahi coming in from the east side. Coming in from the west side, H1H to merge. We're seeing some moderate traffic, even heavier through Kaahumanu, but nothing going on in that area. No major accidents or stalls. Back to the desk. Thank you, Tasia. Time now is 535, and we're taking a live look at the Fox Theater in Detroit, Michigan, where the stage is set for the second round of Democratic presidential debates, and this once again bringing 20 candidates together over the course of two nights. Trevor Alt has a look ahead at what we can expect. It's time for round two. Beginning tonight, the second wave of debates in the quest for the Democratic presidential nomination. The candidates once again split up over two nights, all trying to knife through an extremely crowded field. Heading into night one, a new Quinnipiac poll shows former Vice President Joe Biden expanding on his lead, now with 34 percent support, up from 22 percent at the beginning of the month. Senator Elizabeth Warren is in second at 15 percent, with Senator Kamala Harris appearing to lose her first debate bump dropping to 12% from 20. Senator Bernie Sanders in fourth at 11%. The frontrunner Biden seems to have shaken off what was regarded as a lackluster performance in the first debate. Senator Warren says these debates won't be about taking swipes at other Democrats. We all have a chance to talk about our vision for America, to talk about our plans for America, to talk about how we see building a future in this country. One area where those proposed policies will likely get a lot of focus is health care. Senator Harris releasing her plan. Under our Medicare for All plan, there will be no more co-pays. There will be no more uh, deductibles. But she's already been met with criticism for the plan's details. The Biden campaign saying she's committing to unraveling the Affordable Care Act, while Senator Sanders' campaign manager says, call it whatever you want, but you can't call this plan Medicare for All. After seeing the boost Senator Kamala Harris got for taking on Vice President Joe Biden in the first debate, it's possible we could see more fireworks and more sparring tonight and tomorrow, especially among the struggling candidates who are trying to break into the spotlight. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Detroit.
All right, thanks, Trevor. And a federal judge has avoided making a decision about whether Democrats can request and receive the president's tax returns for now. Yesterday, the U.S. District Court Judge Carl Nichols essentially asked the parties to figure out a solution themselves. He also ordered attorneys for the president to uh, the House and Ways and Means Committee and the state of New York to all meet and try and propose a solution to this by tonight. He told them to use creativity to reach an agreement on this. And the U.S. Senate failed to override President Trump's veto of three resolutions banning arms sales to the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. The resolutions passed Congress with bipartisan support. They were seen as a rebuke of Trump's policies toward Saudi Arabia in the wake of journalist Jamal Khashoggi's murder in 2018. Earlier this month, Trump vetoed the measures rejecting the attempt by lawmakers to halt controversial weapons transfers. Well, immigrants who are fearing persecution because of family ties will no longer be eligible for asylum. U.S. Attorney General William Barr issuing a new ruling yesterday, which could affect thousands, according to the Catholic Legal Immigration Network. Those who fear persecution based on race, religion, nationality, political opinion, or membership in a specific social group can still seek asylum. And now to the deadly shooting rampage at a food festival in California. Three victims died in the attack. Dozens have been wounded. And this morning we are hearing from some of those survivors as authorities look into the troubling social media rhetoric posted by the gunman. Janae Norman has the very latest. This morning, stories of survival after the mass shooting in California. The worst possible situation that you could be in. Nick McFarland says he was at the Gilroy Garlic Festival with friends and family when he spotted the gunman loading his weapon. McFarland and his friend Justin Bates were both shot. Doctors told Bates he was grazed by five to seven bullets. The doctor told me these two one up here that grazed my shoulder, if they were to inch to the right, they would have gone into my lungs and they would have been fatal. I'm, I'm a walking miracle right now. I don't know how I'm alive. Overnight, authorities identified Kayla Salazar as one of the three victims who did not survive. Salazar from San Jose was preparing to celebrate her 14th birthday this weekend. The other two victims, six-year-old Stephen Romero and 20 five-year-old Trevor Irby. Authorities say the suspect evaded security by cutting through a fence and sneaking onto the festival grounds, then unloading with an assault-style rifle. He was shot and killed in less than one minute by police officers. Uh, those three officers were able to fatally wound that suspect. The shooter has been identified as a 19-year-old who lives just miles from Gilroy. Investigators say he bought the gun legally three weeks ago in Nevada. The owner of the gun shop released a statement saying the suspect was happy during the purchase, adding, we sell to people who we think are upstanding citizens to promote safe sports shooting. I pray to God for all the families. Authorities are looking into white supremacist messages the gunman posted online and a post criticizing the festival just before the attack, but they say the motive for the shooting remains unclear. Janae Norman, ABC News, New York. Well, thank you, Janae. Well, turning back here at home, a man has been arrested for attempted murder after allegedly shooting a Honolulu police officer. And this all happened during an armed robbery investigation in Waianae. KTV Force Mackenzie Stasco live outside of police headquarters this morning with the very latest. Mackenzie? Lindsay, Tom, good morning. Well, police this morning tell me that the officer who was shot and the 47-year-old suspect who was arrested in connection to that shooting are both in stable condition. Here's what we know about the incident so far. It happened yesterday near Pokai Bay in Waianae around 1.40 yesterday afternoon. Police tell us several plainclothes officers were investigating an armed robbery on Alta Street that happened over the weekend. The officers were able to identify three people in connection to that robbery when they got to the house. But at some point, police say a scuffle ensued and a man pulled out a gun and shot an officer. That's when police say another officer who was there, also in plain clothes, shot the male suspect. Police tell me the officer was shot in his right hand and in his chest. Chest, rather, KITV confirmed that the officer was wearing a vest. The suspect, though, was shot in his left wrist and his right thigh. That's all according to police. 
case. Both the officer and suspect were both taken to Queens Medical Center on Punchbowl. The 47-year-old suspect was officially arrested at the hospital late last night for attempted murder in the first degree. We have not yet learned the identity of the officer who was shot, but police tell us he's in his 30s and is a five-year veteran of the Honolulu Police Force. And police officials are expected to release more information during a press conference that's expected to happen later today. And as soon as we get more information, we'll be sure to bring it to you. For now, though, Lindsay and Tom will send it back to you. Well, as the demonstrations continue on the tallest mountain in the world, the other 13 telescopes that are already on Mount Kea are remaining empty. And since the start of the tensions over TMT more than two weeks ago, staff have worked from remote locations in Hilo and Waimea. But astronomers tell KITV4 they're concerned about the lack of daily maintenance on the telescopes, which could lead to major malfunctions. Typically, between 50 and 70 researchers are working on the summit at the same time. And now with no daily access, many critical projects have been abandoned. These are the most productive facilities in the world, collective. Uh, with just uh, not being able to observe for two weeks on sky, uh, we have uh, lost a year's worth of discovery. Now, because each telescope is funded through private donors and grants, staff wages have not been impacted. Now, after two years of public review, TMT says its final environmental impact statement was approved in May of 2010. A statewide poll by Pacific Resource Partnership in March of 2017 found 72 percent of likely voters supported the project. It was 60 percent in 2015. In 2018, a star advertiser poll showed 72 percent of Native Hawaiian registered voters expressed support for TMT. 23% were against it, and 5% were undecided. And starting today, the state will install temporary traffic signals at the intersection where demonstrators have been gathered. That's on the Daniel K. Inoue Highway, also known as Saddle Road, at, right there at the Mauna Kea Access Road. It's also part of an effort to keep everyone safe. Straight, trans straight transportation crews will work between 9 o'clock this morning and 3 o'clock this afternoon. During that time, traffic in the area will, re will be reduced to one lane, so if you're driving out there, expect delays. And KATV4 has continuing coverage on the tension over TMT across our social media platforms. We also have a special section set up on our website. You can find that there at KITV.com. Time now, 544, and a Hawaii University is hoping to entice its graduates to continue on with their education. Yeah, see how much they're offering for them to come back for another degree just ahead. Time now, 544. Uptick of clouds today, showers Friday. I'll have more weather and traffic straight ahead. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back. Homeworld, from living room to bedrooms to dining, you'll find a world of possibilities to furnish your home in style. Ready, set, shop. At Homeworld, buy any in-stock item at our everyday low price. Have it delivered and get a cash discount. Or choose 24 months financing. No matter what you choose for your living room, dining room, bedroom, and more. If it's in stock and ready for immediate delivery, you'll get a cash discount or choose to finance your purchase for 24 months at Homeworld Furniture. Get ready, get set, let's shop. My name is Kevin Nip, and I am the founder of Selective Stone. I was born and raised here on Oahu. A lot of my business came from the connections I've made through the years. Selective Stone is all about quality. We have a large variety of material on island, which gives customers the chance to find exactly what they're looking for. Our mission is to supply attractive stone to the community. We look forward to satisfying our customers' needs. Selective Stone, Hawaii's leader in stone innovation. Learn more at selectivestone.net. Service is my cut in law. Imoa, you hope it do and from your heart. Our big order discount service is for sure. Hai nai ya mai kapua na ea. Kawaii kaholo in the cab. We thank you to and from the airport with big discount. Go dial for to do to do to do. 
accomplished graphic artist Moni Casimero, founder of the first female-owned design firm in Hawaii. I wanted to elevate the images and icons of Hawaii and Hawaiians, and I saw that potential in graphic design. Every piece she created through her career, precise and purposeful. Momi Casimero, one of Hawaii's remarkable women. KITV4 Island News honors Hawaii's remarkable women. Brought to you by Levitt, Yamane, and Soldner. saved over $390. Lucette in Honolulu saved over $450. Call 92 Dietrich and save. KITV4 Island News, sponsored by Dietrich Insurance. 547 on this Tuesday in the nation's most densely populated corner, Sears to near 100 later this afternoon. Also, the tropics are also heating up as our next potential tropical system tracks toward Florida. It's not only just tracking Hawaii, but also what's going on in the States and the Pacific. So we do have sea surface temperatures very warm and where those two systems continue to brew and a system just behind Flossie, a disturbance that we're keeping a close eye on as well. So Hurricane Eric is expected to pass toward the south of Hawaii, bringing us more winds and rain by Thursday into Friday and surf. Tropical storm Flossie, even a closer eye on this storm because most of the models are bringing it very close to the tip of our Hawaii state, especially for the eastern half of the state later on into this weekend and the early next work week. So again, definitely stay on top of that. Next update at 11 o'clock this morning. I'll go Facebook Live for that just like yesterday. Closer to the state, trade winds, light trade showers, more so for the eastern half of the state due to a system toward the northeast. So more cloud coverage and showers. And then later on throughout the day, we'll see the western half impacted with partly cloudy conditions. So your Tuesday forecast, Bants and clouds over Hawaii Island and Maui County. Partly sunny for your leeward sides by your midday. Partly cloudy for the windward areas. Beautiful sunset coming up too, by the way. And then by the afternoon, partly cloudy for the eastern end. Temperatures later tonight averaging around 77. Your surf forecast is also pretty calm for today, 2 to 4 for the east and south, and flat to 2 for the north and west. So if you're taking your kids to the beach, better for today, because again, we are expecting rough surf coming on in as early as Thursday night. Now here's a look at your traffic. There are reports of an accident. This is as you were coming through Eva Beach, uh, more so at that Eva Beach exit. So some slowing traffic, and then once you pass that through Cunia, pretty much a breeze until the H1H2 merge. Let's take a look outside of Eva Beach. Pretty clear through Fort Weaver and Kolawaka. And then once you make your way up to the freeway, we're seeing clearer conditions. Again, H1H2 merge, that's where most of the gridlock is. All the way throughout our Waimalu exit, Ka'ahumanu and Ka'anohi have improved. Touching go traffic through IAEA exit at IAEA Heights Drive. Moanalua Freeway clear all the viaduct also into your town spots your east side drive into town in less than 20 minutes coming in from the west side 71 into Honolulu. Over to you. All right, thanks, Tasia. Turning out of what some are calling the largest security breach to ever hit a financial firm. Capital One has announced that a hacker gained access to the personal information of millions of people applying for credit. And this morning, a woman charged in the huge data breach. Kenneth Moten has the very latest. This morning, the big bank warning customers of a massive data breach. Capital One says a hacker gained access to more than 100 million applications, exposing credit cards, credit limits, balances, payment history, and contact information. No credit card numbers or logins were released, but about 140,000 social security numbers were compromised, as well as about 80,000 bank account numbers. The FBI has arrested a Seattle software engineer in connection with the breach, who authorities say went by the name Erratic on Twitter. Investigators say they tracked down Paige Thompson because she allegedly posted the stolen information to a site using her name and email address. If convicted, she faces up to five years in prison and a $250,000 fine. She never really said anything to any of us about it. Thompson's roommate Ashley says she doesn't think Thompson meant to hurt anyone. Paige just wanted to see if she could. She had no nefarious 
uh, intentions with the data. The breach comes just one week after the credit rating agency Equifax agreed to a $700 million settlement over a massive data breach back in 2017. It's not just a breach of security, it's a breach of public trust. We should have confidence that the confidentiality of our information will be maintained. As for Capital One, it says it will notify customers whose information may have been breached and will offer free credit monitoring and identity protection. Thompson is charged with computer fraud. She's due back in court Thursday. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. All right, and something else to watch out for. The Better Business Bureau says scammers putting a new spin on an old scheme, and they're targeting worshipers into giving up gift cards for what they think is a good cause. The Bureau says scammers pretend to be your pastor, your rabbi, your priest, or other religious figures, and, uh, and they ask for a gift card donation through text, email, or phone. The Bureau says you should never donate to a person without doing your research first and never send your gift card number and your PIN. They also advise you to call your church to verify any of those requests. Hawaii Pacific University is trying to bring back alumni with a new scholarship. It's offering $4,000 annual scholarships to all alumni who enroll in the program. This is in person by online master's degree programs. Now, that's $2,000 per semester over two years, and the school has more than 45,000 alumni across the world. And shuttle service being offered for next month's sold-out NFL preseason game between the Los Angeles Rams and the Dallas Cowboys. Roberts Hawaii will pick up customers from six different locations across the island and bring them all to Aloha Stadium. Now, reservations for this are required. Some 50,000 fans expected to fill Aloha Stadium for the August 17th game. It's always fun when they come to Hawaii. Should be a packed show. Yeah. Our time now is 5:53. A new horror flick may have Avengers Endgame beat for the title of this year's longest movie. Yeah. Plus, a country rap song making music history. You're watching Good Morning Hawaii. We'll be right back. Time now, 5:53. Sponsored by Levitt Yamane and Soldner, Hawaii's personal injury law firm. Albert and Dorothy Kita had been together since the 70s. They were inseparable. They did everything together. All of that changed when Laura Ann was told her father had been killed in a head-on collision. When we got there at the hospital, my mom's best friend, she said, and you know that mom didn't make it either. We we'll have to be strong for her at all times because she had a hard time with everything. Laura Ann called Levitt, Yamane, and Soldner. Their staff is fabulous. Mr. Soldner, Nicole, they have been so great. When someone passes away as a result of a tragic collision, most people don't think about what happens to the families of loved ones when they pass away. They have a right to full fair compensation for that too. If you need help, call Levitt, Yamane, and Soldner. I felt in my heart that they could do my parents right and me right. Getting quality food for your best friend just got easier. Hawaii Feed is your locally owned and operated pet food warehouse where you can order online. Simply go to hawaiifeed.biz and order your pet's favorite food online. Your order will be ready for pickup within 24 hours at our convenient centrally located warehouse in Waipio. Choose top quality food for your dog, fish, small animal, or bird from Hawaii's top brands. Go to hawaiifeed.biz and order your pet food today. It's the Honda Summer Spectacular event. That means more euphoric feelings that come from getting a great deal on a Honda CRV or HRV. Or from getting a pilot or passport. All part of 2019's best SUV brand. Hurry in today and experience the joy for yourself. Get a new Honda Passport, named best in class by car and driver at the Honda Summer Spectacular event. April 18th is National Piñata Day, but you don't need to put on a blindfold and hit a paper mache unicorn to get stuff you want. Just become an AARP member. Your AARP membership comes with access to more of what you want, like learning about the latest tech, health tips, nights out at local restaurants, help planning your getaways and more. So take off the blindfold and join today, because you know, it's easier without the blindfold. There's lots of stuff in there, and today could be your day to explore it. Learn more at aarp.org slash more. This is Good Morning Hawaii.
Welcome back to Good Morning Hawaii. Time now is 5.56. All right, but first, we want to get outside with weather and traffic with Tasia. You called it Trade Winds Tuesday. I'm calling it Tasia Tuesday because you have so much to talk about today, right? Thank you. Yes, and I'm wearing my favorite color, so it's going to be a good day. Taking a look at our drive map, we do have some tree trimming today, so some closures that will cause a bit of a slowdown just like yesterday on Farrington Highway, westbound direction between Old Fort Weaver Road and Kualika'i Parkway. 8.30 to 3, that traffic incident that you see on the drive map, that was at Acacia Road. That has just been cleared up. Coming out from YPO, clear conditions, as well as if you are making your way out from Eva Beach, no obstructions there, but we do have some slow going traffic in your typical area of Fort Weaver and Kolowaka. Now, once you make your way onto the freeway, clear through Waikele, H1H to merge, that's when we'll start to see the slowdown as you do make your way closer into Waimalu. As you can see, that's pretty slow. Again, Aya Heights overpass, clear, Waterloo Freeway or the viaduct, no obstructions there, nice drive into town. Town. East Side Drive is also light. We've got breezy conditions coming in from the windward areas. So just, just keep your eyes peeled for any flying debris out on the roadways. Drive times from the east, 18 minutes, an hour and 10 from Waianae to town. Now here's a look at your weather. Surface calm for today, 2 to 4. For the east and south, high tide around 3.30 in the afternoon, flat to 2 for the north and west.